Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Andy from Big Mix Workshop Painting Studio and today it's a commission piece uh, from one of our Patreons, so thank you very much to you. And this is a Chaos Marine done in the Emperor's Children style. These are going to be done uh, very brightly coloured as, as you can imagine, but I'm doing things a little bit different because, um, well, that's the way I wanted to do it. So, uh, as you know, the Care Space Marine models are great. I've got a, a massive soft spot for uh, the um, Space Marine, Care Space Marines and really well detailed models. Uh, but Emperor's Children are very brightly coloured rather than my traditional uh, dark blue. Uh, so we're starting off with uh, Bugman's Glow. And this is going to be all over the uh, right hand side of the armour. Uh, because we're doing a 50-50 split. Now, uh, this could be done with an airbrush. Uh, but that doesn't make us good viewing. So I did this with it, uh, by hand as well. Uh, but the rest of the squad, which you'll see uh, at the end of the uh, video... Uh, we're all done with the airbrush using the same colours so you can get exactly the same effects um, with the airbrush as you can by hand it just uh, is a little bit easier um, and a damn sight quicker so once the Bugman's Glow has gone down uh, we're going to start off with Screamer Pink now we use the Bugman's Glow to give us a nice base colour over the black uh, it's quite um, good for covering uh, nice dark colours and um, the Screamer Pink is obviously uh, a nice based, uh, ba base plate. Uh, and the Screamer Pink is obviously, uh, we use uh, Screamer Pink, so that's uh, a nice vibrant colour. It's going to give us a good base um, to work with. And we're going to get a nice, really cool, bright, vibrant finish on this. As you can see, nice thin layers uh, using a GW uh, small layer brush and we're just getting a good quality smooth coat on there. We're going to start throwing some highlights in and now we're adding some pink horror to the screen of pink. Uh, it's probably about 50-50 and we're just going to start brightening it up um, leaving some of the sc uh, screen of pink showing in the darkest areas but generally speaking it's going to be pretty much um, majority of it. About 70% of the uh, model is going to be covered with the um, Screamer Pink Aura Mix. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, because the majority of the areas are quite exposed and we want these areas looking nice and bright. As you can see I did a bit of a, a reverse on the backpack and also dropped a bit of pink on the knee uh, just to break it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more interesting just to switch up that colour a little bit. So now I've added some more Pink Aura uh, so and these are going to start um, focus on the uh, higher areas uh, the, the most exposed areas uh, you could say and starting to as you can see it's starting to uh, show off a little bit of highlight now I'm also leaving some of the areas um, without it because I'm going to start blending in the uh, uh, the highlights and the shades together uh, using various different um, consistencies of the same colors So it's pretty much pure pink horror now, as you can see, it's just uh, starting to add some uh, real bright highlights now, making this uh, quite vibrant, um, le um, leaving uh, the bulk of the paint uh, in the slightly darker colours. Uh, we're wanting to uh, start to accentuate, accentuate the, um, the colour transition. As you can imagine, using really thin paint, and it's really, really wet as well, uh, to allow me to... Uh, transition these colours. And finally uh, we'll start to add some Empress Children now just to get those uh, real hot spots uh, blocked in uh, so you can start seeing the uh, the areas where the paints are going to transition. Now at this stage it's fairly scruffy I'm trying to uh, just block in the areas where the highlights are going to be I'm going to start uh, blending the colours in, um, in, in, in time um, I'm wanting uh, to p position the highlights in the correct areas where I want them to be. And now I've added some uh, squid pink now from Vallejo. And this is just to really uh, sell those top highlights. Uh, make, uh, make some nice line highlights if that's your style. Uh, I'm just using this to focus the, uh, the colours altogether, uh, the hot spots altogether. So onto the uh, black for now, 
and uh, this is uh, obviously I've gone over with a, a nice uh, quality smooth uh, black base and I'm now using scale 75's black grey uh, this is uh, the obvious highlight to start off with uh, any black, um, black, black armour and I'm trying to keep it um, very much on the uh, black side of things I don't want to go too far to the greys or uh, to the blues uh, I want it to be quite dark uh, so allow it to contrast against the bright pinks. Next is petroleum grey, and uh, this is kind of a browny grey, uh, but it makes for a nice highlight over the uh, the black greys. And what this is going to do is just going to start um, again bringing out those uh, uh, hot spot areas, those nice highlight areas. And it's just going to uh, start working alongside the uh, bright colours on the other side, just to bring it all together. Next is graphene grey, uh, which is a bit more of a grey side of things. It's going to uh, take it a bit more towards the uh, natural blacks. As you can see, it's looking a little bit grey, but I'm just starting to add some highlights in now. And what we're going to do is, uh, once we've got the uh, edge highlights where we want them, we're going to just take it all back to, um, back to the darker colours again, uh, making uh, the recesses really dark to um, give it that actual black look. This is more graphene grey into the mixture, and I'm just using the uh, Winsor Newton um, Double Zero to assist me getting some real nice pinpoint highlights now. Uh, just starting to uh, feather the um, different colours together, making that uh, ha them hot, uh, highlight areas that mi bit more sharp. Uh, I was really going to start to um, bring bring those uh, greys together at this point. So I'm now adding some rainy grey in there, which is a, a quite a light grey, and I'm just going to start finishing off these uh, edge highlights. As you can see, just like on the pink, it's still fairly scruffy at this point. We're going to um, turn it all together with uh, washers, and this is just going to um, add uh, an extra layer of colour into it to bring all those uh, highlights out. I'm also going to go back over with a black grey um, around the areas where the highlights are not exactly where I want them, just to tidy it up again. Uh, make it a bit darker and it's just going to um, get the uh, highlights looking really vibrant. So another quick round with the uh, extra highlights after tidying things up a little bit. And as you can see, it's just uh, start them highlights are just starting to um, pop right out. So now I'm going over all the black sections with non-oil. Uh, this is going to darken everything up. Um, it's going to bring the uh, shades together. It's going to so it's going to make the armor look um, black uh, with the highlights rather than some kind of weird off grey color. I did much the same thing on the uh, pink side using Screamer Pink as a glaze, and I use that to uh, blend in all the color transitions and just layer it up nice and slowly. And you can actually see where the uh, highlights start to uh, mute into the um, base colours as well and you get a really nice uh, transition. So now we've got trim, uh, all Chaos players know the suffering of uh, painting trim on any Chaos Marine and I'm using Decayed Metal uh, by Scale 75. This is uh, going all over all the trim and this is going to be the, uh, a unifying colour all around the model. It's going to um, make the entire colour scheme feel cohesive, it's going to break up all those uh, uh, vibrant um, pinks and uh, link, br bring them together with the uh, dark black. Uh, and I'm going into all the silver areas uh, along the pipe works, that sort of thing. This is using below, uh, Scale 75's black metal, uh, iron breaker or lead belcher. Um, they work perfectly fine and again just uh, keeping it nice and neat, you don't want to uh, 
make any extra work for yourself where possible. So onto a, uh, the leather work and I'm using Arbuckle's brown which is kind of a red, uh, ready brown. Uh, so that's on the um, the holster, uh, the uh, uh, leather wrappings on the axe, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, it's kind of, a, like I say, it's a nice red brown uh, and it really does, uh, because it's quite dark it really goes well along with all the um, pinks and uh, the more vibrant colours. And all the bone work is getting based up in Iroko. Uh, it's a colour you've probably seen me use a hell of a lot. I do like it, it's really good for um, working for uh, bone work. Uh, it's kind of a nice yellowy cream colour. Um, does take a couple layers to go over blacks. Uh, so maybe get using something like Xandri Dust uh, as a base layer just to uh, make it a little bit easier uh, before, so you don't have to do too many layers. After a couple of good layers, you get a real nice finish when you start throwing any highlights in. So a couple of good layers of uh, the Oroco, and now it's uh, Rietl and Flesh Shade, uh, just to add some depth into the um, into the bone. And I'm going to leave that uh, to dry for a little while, uh, whilst we move back onto the trim. Back onto the trim, and now it's Rune Lord Brass. Uh, it's going to be the first highlight on all uh, on any of the uh, gold gold sections. It really is a nice colour. It really brings out the um, the metal work ever so nicely, and it, it does really adapt well with the decayed metal. Um, you can use it over golds, but I find it works really nicely over a um, nice deep um, bronzy colour. Now obviously uh, we're starting to add some detail in now so you've got to try and be really careful as uh, any mess ups here will start to really ruin your day because it takes a long time to recover from uh, when you start putting uh, metallic colours onto areas that are already painted. So after the Rune Lord has uh, dried we're going to um, agrax the entire lot of all the um, gold metal work. Uh, it's going to add a lot of depth to it. Uh, it's going to really make the uh, colours come together you're gonna, um, and it adds a real nice rich tone to it. Now you could use um, you could use Rietland again, uh, but that uh, makes it a lot more red. The uh, Rune Lord uh, really mutes the colours. Uh, sorry, the Agrax really mutes the colours and uh, takes them in a slightly different direction. Takes the colours in a slightly different direction. So we're using Graphene Grey again. Uh, this is for the uh, loincloth. Um, I couldn't really decide what colour uh, to work with, so um, I didn't know what colour I wanted the uh, the line cloth. So I felt grey was a nice sort of happy medium sort of colour, and it really does uh, it doesn't take away too much from the um, black over pink. It's quite a neutral one, so it really does um, assist with the paint overall paint scheme. So now I've added some rainy grey into it, and it's going to start throwing a few highlights in. Uh, keeping it nice and simple, uh, the line, the uh, the robes and such are only a, a tertiary piece of detail, so we don't need to go over the top on um, making them look absolutely spot on. But we've still got to uh, keep those highlights and, and shades really nice and smooth. Once the rainy grey's dried and the, you've got the highlights, a little bit of non oil on there, and that's just going to uh, tie it all together. And we're going to have a. It's going to just blend those colours into uh, together nicely. Also, we're going to use a non oil oil all over any of the silver work, as this is a, a perfect opportunity to um, get all your uh, silver uh, shaded as well at the same time as doing everything else. So back onto the leather work, and this is our calls brown again. Uh, just to make sure we've got an, a good even coverage all over the um, leather, leather sections just going over with a second layer just to make sure and uh, before we start to add some highlights onto it 
Once we've got that down, uh, we've added a touch of Bugman's flesh into it. Uh, it's going to uh, really lift the colours, um, bring it up um, really nicely. It's going to start adding some nice uh, pinky um, highlights to it, uh, but it's uh, still very subtle. Uh, we want these uh, highlights look um, really natural rather than over the top. Uh, I know uh, Sun Ash Marines tend to be a little bit over the top, but the highlights shouldn't be. You want them to look just right. So now we've added some. So now we're adding some resurrection flesh into it, uh, just for the uh, final uh, final touches. Uh, the resurrection flesh is just going to really sort of lift that colour. It's going to make it kind of purpley. Um, so on camera it looks quite similar to the um, pinks, but uh, it's just the way the camera's going to pick up that, uh, that particular highlight. Once um, everything's dried and washed in. Uh, uh, what, what wash together then uh, it'll really just start to uh, stand out and you get a really nice effect. So now we're adding some Psychorax bronze uh, that's going to start highlighting the gold work and this is just uh, going to bring it all together over the wash uh, the wash has done a real nice job of uh, adding depth to the uh, to the gold now we're uh, going to start uh, lifting some of the uh, hot spots to make it look a bit better So for the next highlight on gold, we've added about 50% of uh, black metal to it. Quite a nice uh, bright uh, silver here, uh, really lifting the uh, top sections of the uh, metal work. Uh, we're trying to stay away from any of the uh, shaded sections, uh, but you know sometimes that's unavoidable. We, we do some uh, do sometimes highlight the wrong areas, but you just do what you can. And now it's a little bit of chain mail just for the final highlights on all the silver and all the uh, gold trim. Really making them leading edges uh, stand out. Uh, focusing all the uh, high extreme highlights to one side of the model uh, where the uh, natural light is uh, catching it. So after painting the um, random helmet on the top, which you just use McCrag Blue, as uh, you can't go wrong with uh, painting dead ultramarines on your uh, models, uh, back onto the Iroko, getting a nice second coat of Iroko, just settle it all down, bring all the cores together. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add uh, touches of Mahovi White into the model. And this is just going to start allowing us to highlight the, um, highlight the figure. Uh, in in a really nice manner, getting those uh, highlights from the Mahovi white, uh, which is a real nice creamy white, as you can see, and uh, just leave a little bit of a darker colour um, showing through, and you do get a real nice effect. A little bit more Mahovi white, just for the final highlights. As you can see, it's just starting to uh, really become quite more, uh, much more bone-like now, and it's just going to uh, finish that job. Now, obviously, at this stage, uh, it's just about done. We need to uh, varnish it, so don't forget to varnish it. You don't, you want your models to uh, uh, be protected, even if they're just regular tabletop models. You still want to varnish them. It does stop um, do a lot of favours getting them. Uh, it does do a lot of. Um, a lot of work protecting the models. We always do a gloss varnish first. Um, the reason in, uh, behind this is we uh, like to do an oil wash. So once we've got the oil wash down, then we put a matte varnish on top. And what that'll do is it'll bring everything down to the same um, finishing texture. So you get the same finish across uh, the entire model. And here you are. Uh, this is the uh, sergeant on his own. And we're also uh, going to do a spin of the uh, of the entire squad. So thank you guys for watching, um, we really do appreciate it, please hit like and sh um, share with your friends. Also huge thanks to the Patreons, they're up there on the top, uh, without you guys we couldn't do any of this, so you really do uh, um, help us out and uh, keep, all, keep all our uh, lights and 
uh, everything working. So huge thank yous to you guys. Want to help support the channel and get cheap model and hobby supplies? Click the Element Games affiliate link in the description for 15 to 25 percent off. Use the promo code BIG223 on the checkout to earn double the crystals. Crystals equals cash in your Element Games account that can be spent on your next purchase so everybody wins.